Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike. What's hey. going? It's going? It's going. I uh, we were talking before we hit the record button that I've been grinding chess for the last two hours for the first time in twenty years, and I'm feeling real down on myself. So we're going to talk about things that aren't chess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chess is a chess is a, a game where it's definitely like one that you really got to put a lot into it to get a lot out of it. Yeah, so. it's just like I w- I'm like unrated on chess.com or whatever. Like these were the first games I played in twenty years or whatever, and. Uh, Apparently, people at like the four hundred to five hundred rating like have openings and stuff memorized. So that's what <laughs> <it>. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if I could even tell you like one chess opening. Right I now. couldn't. I, I played I, it all the time in yeah. like junior high school and high school, but it's yeah, it's it's been a long time, <laughs> and that knowledge has deteriorated. Yeah. So. Uh, Hey, you. I'm I'm glad to be here and talking about a game I do know stuff about. <laughs> yes, that would be Star Wars Legion. Yeah, uh, not Star Wars Unlimited. Although I do know um, stuff about that game too. Yeah, I'm learning stuff about that game. I'm not a um, I'm not a card game player really historically. Mm-hmm. So I was berating Poor Hob earlier uh, about like you know like what's a control deck? <laughs> Blue green. What does that mean? Um, so I'm trying to like organize all my cards, which mm. is quite a undertaking because even that is like, how do I organize this in a way that's going to be useful for me to build decks? So, yeah, it's definitely the whole card games and keeping track of the cards is a pain once you buy anything more than like a starter box. That's why I actually, I've just got the stuff from the pre release and, uh, I don't know, maybe every time I go to the store, I'll get like a booster pack, but I'm not going to actually like buy a box i think yeah well i mean like i i think just by like playing the game i will eventually collect a dragon sword of cards probably so that's fair i'm just you know know, it seems like you just kind of get free cards for playing in most tournaments basically right yeah generally free free, quote unquote they're like covered by the entry fee right right. um and like our uh our store uh, game castle college park um does the events that they're holding it's like every match you win you get a booster pack it's like okay yeah, you know great. like cool. easy way to grow your collection slowly and in a way that's like manageable <laughs> right instead of getting 500 cards or whatever it wants yeah yeah um which unfortunately is what i did because it's I okay was, i mean that's a good yeah. way to start too it's just like it's definitely less manageable as as somebody that does not historically play card games it was a little overwhelming i'm sure it was i i that's why i didn't do it i was like i've i've got into enough card games to know that this is not how i would like to start the journey yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway mistakes were made oh. um but we're going to talk about legion today mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about a couple things we got some i mean they're not really previews but we got pre-order pages posted for the commandos and range troopers and there is some info on there which is relevant there's uh, some deductions i think we can make too from the descriptions yeah um so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about when we're actually bringing to worlds because lists have been locked and submitted so there's no reason not to talk about that anymore we're going to talk about the faction breakdown for the world championships for the same reason uh they have not actually like made all the lists public yet, but people have been posting their lists in the Adepticon chat just kind of randomly. 
you know, mm-hmm. it's only been like whatever, 15 to 20 people at this point, obviously not all 270 players or whatever in the discord and posting stuff, but it's still interesting. There's a lot of uh, interesting lists that people have been posting in there. So, um, and then finally, we're going to talk about the galactic conquest rules because uh, for those that don't know, galactic conquest is the name of basically like the tournament regs for Legion for AMG. Um, and they are being used for the world championships. And that is relevant because basically for the, their entire history over the last year, they have not been used in their entirety uh, in really any major U S tournament. And there are two specific rules that have been not used up until now, and they will be used for worlds. So we're going to talk about those just so people are aware of them and how they work. Um, so, First, shall we talk about commandos and range troopers? Yeah, let's do it to it. So, yeah, they posted the Asmodee store pages for these these bad boys. Yep, uh, they're coming out on May the 3rd. Uh, so we'll um, just in time for... Uh, May the 4th. May the 4th. Um, so that'll be, that'll be great. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I'm pretty excited about these guys. I mean, I guess um, we definitely we've talked about the like rules previews we've had on these guys before. Um, I think if we want to start with commandos, it's a it's a four mini box set. Um, it's not really clear if uh, these guys are going to be like, super posable. They kind of the poses these guys got going on look a bit more posable than uh, the range troopers, maybe um, just because yeah. their arms are kind of separated on a couple of the guys yeah uh, so there's two unit cards in this pack and two upgrade cards and that's pretty much what's in there other than the miniatures and the description specifies exactly what those four cards are if they don't you know they don't obviously the description doesn't describe them in detail the one of the unit cards is a regular clone commando the other unit card is delta squad and the two upgrade cards are the signature Katarn pattern armor, which I had to look up, okay. um, and the uh, DC seventeen M ICWS blaster carbines, which appear to be a configurable flip card, like an armament flip card thing. I think so. That, okay. That's what this suggests. Yeah. Um, so, and what's notable, I think, is these miniatures are. I think all four of these miniatures are holding different guns. So it looks like at least if you're looking at the picture online, which I currently am, um, I've, you have the dude who's holding his fist up who appears to be the squad leader. Yep. Uh, he's definitely holding something that's different than the two generic dudes on either side of him. I think those two dudes are holding the same weapon though. Okay, maybe maybe those are the same. So there's like a sniper rifle looking thing. Yep. Like I would describe the thing that the leader is carrying as maybe like a kind of looks plasma gunny. Um, yeah, it's 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 like submachine gun sized, but it's kind of wide and it's got like a bluish. I mean, this is you know how the person painted it, obviously, but it's got like a bluish, glowy thing on it. Mm-hmm. So, and then the two other guys have what looks like basically the laser blaster. gun equivalent of a submachine gun, the, the blasters. I imagine so, those are just the blaster carbines that yeah. the, the card refers to. Right. Um, what I thought was cool about the Katarn pattern armor, though, apparently uh, this is an equipable upgrade. And uh, Wikipedia says that Katarn pattern armors include uh, deflector shields. Just <laughs> in case all you Republic junkies don't have enough defensive tech. In case you guys were jealous of the, uh, the EXD... Uh, bx commando droid trick um yeah yeah i don't know that this necessarily means that it's going to be like identical with the shielded keyword um that would certainly be an easy way to like just take a mechanic that already exists for what this seems to be describing and use it yeah um but yeah it's interesting that is this the first time we've had like armor as an upgrade card uh i i want to say yes um, I mean, mechanically, it could just be similar to shields, which we've definitely had as an, as an upgrade card before. But 
I mean, there could be like several things this does. Like they might be like normal red save units, and this just like allows you to surge, right? And sure, yep. you know, basically turns it into like Mando saves. Um, Impervious. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I if the defensive tech on these guys isn't super good, I hope they're two wounds, uh, because four models is not traditionally been a winning amount unless it, you're a strike team and then it's you know like having a small model count is oh sure totally sure fine. yeah yeah i, I yeah. just i mean specifically like the four model sure or model yeah. squads with maybe the exception of wookies has uh not been a super great place to be in this game and in that case that's a multi-wound unit obviously. right that's what that's what i mean like yeah. all the all the things that are like four that have been successful are like magna guard they have two wound apiece you know woogies have three but all the mandos are like not soup like if these are basically mandos i don't know we'll see yeah we'll um, see a lot depends on cost and offensive potential and all that stuff so yep um all right shall we move on to the range oh there's one more important thing about these guys it says that they're a support unit is that right yeah, so um, it says that they are a support unit. Uh, so two unit cards allow these miniatures to be deployed as either a standard support squad or as the renowned Delta squad. Now, that could just be like... It has support unit in capitals. It does. It does. And it would be weird if they... I think it would say special forces right there instead. I of, think so too. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen a, a kind of like text like this be wrong. That's um, true. Yeah. But I think this definitely highly suggests there are a support unit. So, I thought they also said special forces on one of the streams. I, I definitely was under the impression and assumption up until we saw this uh, store page ad that they were going to be special forces. Um but I, for one, am going to be delighted to play three full arc units and three and three commandos, commandos. all at the same time, yeah. or like or like a bunch of commandos backed up by arc strike teams like that. That sounds like fun to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, from a gameplay perspective, at least for Republic, the support slot is not a super competitive slot. So, Maybe, yeah, we got barks and what flarecraft is that? I think that's the only things that. And ATRTs, Mike. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about <laughs> units that are we put on the table in this game. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. I totally forgot about ATRTs. Um, so yeah, if you can put like an actual clone trooper unit that's any good in a support slot, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty darn interesting from a clone list building perspective. Yeah, it seems it seems like this is likely to just kind of. For players that were hoping to see like a divergence from the clone gun line thing, <laughs> this seems to be something that merely makes that existing, you know, clone trooper gun line even better. <laughs> yeah. If that's the case, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. That's very fair. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we now have a thing that says clone trooper in the support slot as a key is the unit type, which is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, maybe they're really expensive and it's just like you know, you just can't fit these guys alongside a bunch of arcs because they're a bunch of points. But that would certainly be thematically appropriate for them because they're supposed to be like even more elite than arcs, right? That, that the thing? I'm not really sure about. Okay. I, I don't have a good sense of that. I will say from the media that we've been seeing lately, specifically Bad Batch, I think, I think that's probably what they are kind of suggesting like you don't really see like arcs running around but you see clone commandos um i feel like the clone commandos might be more of uh, uh maybe a later iteration of what i don't know i I, th I think that uh arcs are more like the guys that are supporting um like actual battalions in the field and clone commandos are like they're literally the Navy SEALs, you know, like type it's, deal. It's it's the difference between like uh you know, Delta slash Navy SEALs and like the Rangers, basically. Right. Yeah. 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 It's okay. like I don't I don't think the clone commandos were probably like deployed alongside units regularly. They were like, you have a very specific mission, go do it. 
Okay. If they're in if they're in a big battle, somebody is like messed up, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Range troopers. Yeah, range troopers. So um, you, these are the fight. guys from a solo, right? <laughs> these are the guys from the train heist. Uh, okay. odds it's in the solo movie. Um They're a special forces option based on the description. There okay. are six upgrade cards in this pack. Um, that's that's a lot. It is a lot. Uh, it doesn't really tell us what they are. It says uh, able to easily traverse difficult terrain. The range troopers are a company are companies as opposed to accompanied by six upgrade cards <laughs> that invite <laughs> players to augment them to fit their own strategy. Um, so uh, I think the most likely thing here is this is where that advanced targeting keyword probably is. And these upgrade cards probably have like different, different things to target. Yeah. J like, Invite players to augment them to fit their own strategy. Sounds like it's you can tailor them to do something very specific. I don't know. That'd be neat. I mean, as we noted when that keyword came out, it sort of cries out for specialization. Yeah. Um I think it's gonna be super boring if it's just like, you know, uh targeting trooper or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Target um, those tauntauns. Yeah. Um, um it, it, Literally almost every unit in the game targeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Uh I hope that that's what the six upgrade cards are about. Um they definitely have like I mean there's at least I'm looking at these these sculpts here. There's it looks like there's at least three different weapons that these guys are holding. So uh, that that's interesting for sure. Um because the the description actually suggests that there is only one heavy weapon option interesting okay but but in the box it kind of looks like there's more than that like on the, in the artwork the description says these um that they are, have e10r blaster rifles these ministers are joined by a heavy weapon miniature that further accentuates the unit's firepower i mean that could just be that it's like one heavy weapon slot you got to pick which one just yeah, like it's, it's typical with um, previous trooper units. That's definitely possible. I think um, mm -hmm. one thing that's notable here, I think, is that based on the amount of miniatures in this box, it sort of looks like this is going to function a little bit more like core unit as far as uh, like traditional slots go. There's definitely two miniatures that look like they're holding heavy weapon guns, and there are yep. five miniatures that look like they're holding regular guns. I would not be surprised if this was a four man squad that had a personnel squad slot for like a regular dude, um, and a heavy weapon slot. Kind yep. of, kind of like your regular core option. We just don't see many special forces, if any, with a personnel slot. I think. I can't think of one. It's also possible they're just a five-man squad and you just tack a heavy weapon on it. Um, but that feels kind of not par for the course for Legion. Um, so I, I guess my inclination would be with how many upgrade cards are in the box. It's pretty likely there's a personnel upgrade. Yeah, that seems likely. Um, Which could could be really interesting because that might mean you could put like medics and officers and stuff in the squad because I don't totally, think totally. I don't think they're actually limited to core options. It's they just did. we've never we've never had a personnel on something that's not a core. I think dark troopers have it. Dark troopers have it, but it's like well, so they recently changed because they had to change the personnel upgrade language. Because mm. because of this situation with dark troopers, okay. So, um, you know, I'm curious. I I don't I don't unfortunately have like the errated version of the cards in front of me, or maybe they um, changed something on the dark troopers. But basically, like yes, the original version of the, all the empire personnel upgrades only say imperial only, mm, and okay. nothing else. Um, you know, the stormtrooper, the stormtrooper captain, and the specialist do specifically say stormtroopers only. Yeah. But the officer, the comms tech, the medical droid, and the astromech droid just say Imperial only. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, how, even if you can do that, I'm not sure how good. I guess it depends on what these guys' unit cards 
are we depend and, on like, and like the the, co the cost of their generic dude um but it seems like if you're going to spend the same amount of points on a medical droid in either this unit or like a stormtrooper unit you probably want to put it in the stormtrooper unit if these guys are supposed to be special forces seems like a waste of their personnel slot to use a medical droid on but i agree um that's interesting i that actually rings a bell with the uh the dark troopers the dark troopers yeah um i'm gonna i'm gonna look this up now because i don't need, i don't even know where this would be <laughs> it'd be it'd be in the official errata i think i think they actually had to go through and oh change you think the, they like errated the actual cards i think so um because okay. i don't i don't know how you'd put it on the dark trooper unit card to say that they can like only equip the dark trooper yeah i was thinking maybe and... it's like uh it was like a rules change to how personnel slots work specifically but yeah i think you'd have to the cleanest way to do it would be to actually errata the original personal upgrade cards ah fx9 medical droid upgrade card change the restriction to imperial core trooper only there you um, go i imagine that all of the rest of them are like that too yep um, yeah otherwise you could put an officer in a dark trooper unit and it would have the same base stat line as, as the dark trooper <laughs> yeah 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 okay cool it's been a while since i've paid attention to those specific erratas so good to have a refresher on it yep um so all that rules speculation about these guys aside, uh, I have it was actually you that made this observation. Um, and I yeah. agree. <laughs> this is such a minor thing, it's not it, a minor thing. I, I think at this point, it is not a minor thing, okay, because it's happened multiple times. At this, this point. is yeah. so, yeah, so it happened with the Ewoks, and and it looks like it's happening here again, and I don't know, honestly. This is something that I'm probably we probably had more foreknowledge of than than we're letting on here because like we've definitely seen the range trooper models before. This is like just kind of like the first time I've seen them on the box, and it's very clear on the box that like four of these seven sculpts at minimum are like two copies of the same mini, and they they did it with the Ewok box too, and it's just like. I I get having minis that are the same that are in different squats because you bought the same box twice. Right. But if we're only getting, you know, six to seven models in a box for 50 bucks. This is GW prices, basically. This is GW prices. Yeah. Like, like, and I get that Star Wars is kind of like you're also paying for the brand a little bit yeah. at this point, like whatever. Um, but like, can can we can you, I don't know. I haven't opened the box, so maybe we'll be proved wrong, and there'll be um, alternate ways to build these guys. But like on the, I would I would think that if there were alternate ways to build these guys, they wouldn't have it on the box art like this. <laughs> Well, and this actually, having just recently built them, it's the same deal with Gene Oceans too. Yes. Where yeah. um, there's actually, you know, the the leader and the Force Pike and the Scattergun are all distinct sculpts, but then the other four guys are like two copies of the same sculpt each. And it's a little bit less noticeable with them because they're so posable. They're super posable. These guys do um, not look... They don't look posable. Super posable. And it was actually the same thing. I'm trying to think of the first time I saw this. I think it was actually the... Uh, the Wookie box. Um, I put my the Wookie together, yeah. Um, there is a, it's essentially one of those where there's like, like a repeated sprue. Yep. Um, and again, the Wookies are also superposable, so again, less of a big deal, less noticeable. Um, the Pikes had a similar thing where it was like two copies of the same sprue, also very posable, so less noticeable. Uh, maybe these guys will be posable as well, and it'll be less noticeable, but. It seems like they've been doing this. The 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 Ewoks. It was super noticeable because like they were <laughs> not as posable. <laughs> yeah, every single one of them was like left-handed, um, including the ones that are like not the repeat sculpts. I don't know why every Wookiee is left-handed or every Ewok. Ewok. Sorry, maybe um, it's a this a genetic thing that just just an Ewok thing. They're left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was it was way more noticeable with them because they were not nearly as posable as the previous times this has been done. But yeah, like it, I mean, it, if we're gonna pay fifty 
bucks for a box. I don't mind paying that. I would totally pay that for like GW quality models. But and, and, and to be clear, the models the models are great. I think at this point are very close to GW quality. It's, they, they're they might, excellent. They might sculpts. not be like like GW's on the back of you know thirty years of modeling experience at this point, but like the models are beautiful. They are like not knocking the models. Just maybe put two more sculpts in there. <laughs> that would be yeah, I don't give know. us just give us a unique set of sprues instead of you know if this is like two two copies of the same sprue or something. Yeah. Uh you know, I'm sure there's some cost savings there or I'm sure you know, whatever. Is. I'm I'm not I don't have insight into the business side of it, obviously, but um as a hobbyist, I would certainly appreciate being able to make a seven model unit with no repeat sculpts. It's not like this is like a 30 model orc boy unit or something like right. that. Right. Yeah, it's not like it's an Imperial Guard unit. Yeah. You know, I I think I was willing to forgive it a little bit more with Ewoks because there was just a billion of them. Right. You yeah. Know? Um but I mean, we're talking about like this this unit's probably gonna have like six guys in it when you put it on the table. And there's like probably only gonna have one or two of these units in your army. Yeah. Right. And why yeah why i don't know um anywho yeah it's super minor the sculpts have been generally great it's just a, a little bit annoying with the it seems like they're they're doing this thing where they're just doing like duplicate sprues for the generic you know non-heavy non-leader stuff so and actually even the heavies in this in this box seem like they're the same pose and you just kind of switch out the. Th that's what i mean like that like that it just looks like you swap out the gun <laughs> and yeah. it's, the, it's the same pose that's a little bit less of a deal because you're probably yeah. only going to put one heavy in this in like the on the at table at, at yeah. once so it's like less but um yeah yes yeah. just... anyway all right that's enough about that i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right let's talk about what we're bringing to worlds what we're bringing to worlds yeah, nice. Worlds is is in three three days. Uh, Friday is the first like day of the official World Championships. Oh, sure, sure. I, I'm thinking Adepticons um, in three days. I guess. Yeah. I so think. actually, I think technically Adepticon starts like tomorrow. We're recording this on Monday. Um, I don't know if it's you know just people getting there and stuff, or there's actually events. But I got like a little email that was basically like, "Welcome to Adepticon 2024." You know, um. Yeah, I think it's actually like officially starts tomorrow. But yeah, the world championships don't start until Friday. By the time you're hearing this cast, which could be on Wednesday, uh, most of you are, including us, are probably going to be traveling there. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's soon. <laughs> it's basically it's, now. It's, it's, yes, uh, <laughs> I will be on a plane in less than forty eight hours. Um, yep. Which I'm, trying is... find, I'm trying to find my list. I literally just had it pulled up. Mm. This is a epic. Here it is. Okay. All right. So here's what I brought or will be bringing once I find all the cards. Um, <laughs> I have it's not okay. been good. I with will my bank card roll organization. whatever cards you don't have, Kyle. It's fine. I, I'm going to be able to find all of them. It's just going to be a little bit of a, I'm not. I used to be like super organized with card binders and sleeving every card. And um, since I now have five factions, yeah, yeah I left that I left that world behind to like three factions ago. <laughs> that's fair. It's it's really difficult to. I definitely I have like six binders at this point, like one for each faction, and then like a vanilla binder for all the neutral stuff. Yeah, and that's what I need to do. It's it's just so unwieldy every time i want to play a new list i gotta yeah. like pocket all the old stuff so i don't lose it and then it's just it's a lot yeah i failed to do that anyway last time i played clones which is what i'm playing <laughs> for the world championships i failed to put them back where they properly belonged i just kind of shoved everything in a bag and put the bag somewhere um so yeah but it is going to be anakin padme i say this with slight sadness uh this is kind of where I always figured I'd end up, but didn't want to go. Um, and I did try a lot of different things, and it just didn't. I think the two just... of us tried really hard to get Geonosians to work. Yes, um... I tried I tried really hard to get Geos to work, 
they're just there's two things there. The first is that they're just really darn squishy. <laughs> they're not even <laughs> squishy. They're just they just evaporate. Yeah, maybe just... squishy is like a little bit too charitable. Yeah, um, like it's it's not like every time they get shot, I just assume the unit is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's a you know it's kind of the same problem fleet troopers have right it's a fragile they're effectively an assault unit it's a fragile assault unit it's the same reason you can't give the the radiation gun to b1 troopers yep <laughs> like range two is an incredibly dangerous distance you know you get into range two you're a you're definitely within all those dangerous range three pools but that's also like you know black sun range black sun range it's it's in, like me- melee range for a lot of things. Yeah, you're charge getting range. anything that's got charge on it, it's gonna probably get a hold of you. Like it's it's not yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and being fast is great, but it's not like they can make like reactive moves. So, you know, that means they're very timing sensitive and it's a core unit. So if you're running Geonosians, that means like most of your army is timing sensitive, and that's just not something that works, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, I definitely think that they were better than I think most people are going to give them credit for it. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely think they're like, they're very close to being good enough. Um, but they're just not there. Yeah. I'd say it's like a solid, like B minus tier. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, we're going to assign a letter grade to it. Yeah. Don't take Sunfac. You got to take Poggle. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't have to take Poggle. I know you were messing around with not, I was. not Poggle Geonosians, but, yeah. um, I wish the Poggle did more than just supercharge them on the two pip turn. <laughs> yeah. His one and his three pip just don't do anything. No. Um but yeah, and also like, you know, you can make a in theory. You can make a great objective skew deck with you know Gene Oceans, but essentially what I was finding is that's just like not enough anymore. Not if you're getting we, blown off the table. Right. And you and you sort of you have to put yourself in that position because of how the tiebreak rules work now, right? So, yes. you know, bombing run is the clearest example because I was running like a Geonosian triple stab list with 11 activations, which is you look at that list and you're like, oh, this list is great at bombing run. But after you very quickly deliver your three bombs, um, like that doesn't that doesn't win you the game. You still have to kill a unit. Right, you're and you're <laughs> the the clone ball or the, the you know the pike ball or whatever you're facing against uh, has six turns to just kind of like slow walk their bombs. I know they have to detonate one on whatever turn four. Yeah. Um, but that's not like a high bar. No, um, it, it's like pretty on most deployments. You know, maybe start long march. Detonating on three is regular troopers. If yeah. if 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 there's not an actual conflict happening, right. it's it's pretty easy to detonate them. Yeah. So, you know, if you're the list, in this case, the Gene Oceans, that's bringing Bombing Run, you still have to actually, like, go attack your opponent's clone ball. Even after or, you know, along at the same time as doing the objectives. Yeah. And that's just not going to be good for you. So, you know, I think more and more people historically have been, like, reflexively afraid of Bombing Run against speeders. Like, oh, my opponent has speeders, Bombing Run flipped up, boom, veto. But, like, you don't... You don't really need to do that. I think more people are realizing that under the new tiebreak rules, most objectives, including bombing run, are actually like defensive objectives for an 800 point gun line. 100%. It's, it's, um, it's been the primary reason that 800 point stuff is just like really good. I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so the weirdness of this list, and I'll get into it. I was really struggling to get the 800. I kept ending up at 799. <laughs> Uh, in the Anakin bad may list yes uh, it was infuriating you... i'm like just give me a one point upgrade card that is blank please oh, sure. like literally it does nothing i don't care i just want a one point upgrade card um yeah so <laughs> anyway i'll walk through it it's anakin saber throw i'll talk about it at the, the end because this is a giant this was a ginormous point of waffling for me um force push offensive stance endurance um I'm still I still like to play and I can aggressive. I can't I can't leave that off if I'm not running ploy. So anyway, maybe it's a crutch. I don't know. Uh I think I think if you're running throw as opposed to barrier, it's far more defensible. If you're running barrier, I think endurance is much less necessary. Yeah, because you're just chilling, you're just chilling and you're, you're doing chill all the time. Yep. Yeah. Uh Padme with C's. 
again, sort of a consequence of taking Saber Throw there because it allows you to get an extra face up on Anakin's one pit turn. Um, two pikes with the Disruptor and the Capo. Uh, phase two clones with the Z6, a clone medic, and situational awareness. A phase one unit with the Z6. This is where it gets weird with the stupid 799 thing, which I'll explain in a minute. The Z6, the clone captain, impact grenades, and situational awareness. Uh, phase one clone troopers with DC 15 captain situational awareness and then echo and that is 800 points so you decided on impact grenades and turn to the smoke grenades huh yes because a i think smoke grenades are pretty useless <laughs> because everybody's um, got cover anyways right um <laughs> and impact grenades actually can be useful against like aggressive armor skews which it turns out people are actually kind of bringing to worlds so i'm glad that i'm i'm, I'm glad that i was kind of forced into this uh but basically what happened is i really wanted this second phase one clone unit with z6 captain to just be a dc captain yep but that puts me at 799 <laughs> and there's there's like nothing to cut to add something back to make it 800 it's really tough. um so essentially what i had to do is convert it down to z6 which gives you two points and then now you have three you're at 797 and there are plenty of things that are three points including impact grenades so that's what i ended up doing <laughs> Yeah, the the phase one heavy weapons are nice in that the like RPS and the Z six are pretty. They allow you to play in that one point range. Yeah. Um, but the DC fifteen being two points more expensive than the DC fifteen, than a Z six, than a Z six. Sorry. Yeah. Um, definitely poses this challenge a lot. This is not. I know that this might be the first time in a long time that you've had to fight with this but every time i build a republic list this issue comes up <laughs> yeah it's like such I, a pain I, th I think it's i won't go on a rant about the tie break here <laughs> but i think it's i think it's silly that like you have to spend every single point including potentially spending it on stuff that you have no interest in using yeah. just just to get a benefit this this is like totally you know for me bidding was always a feature rather than a bug because you you're paying points to get a benefit. Are you still um, are, Kyle. You're getting your battle deck. <laughs> Which doesn't help you when you still have to, like, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your opponent's clone ball. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it is what it is. Uh, I'm actually happy to have the impact grenades after people started posting a bunch of lists in the Adepticon chat, and it's all, like, buses and lats. Well, not the impact grenades aren't going to help against the lats, but, no. um, and like Tempest with ATSD grenade launchers and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this is going to be useful. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no barrier. I took saber throw for the same reason that, um, I, well, for two reasons. A, that's what I'm used to running historically, which was a big consideration, uh, because that's just kind of how I run Anakin. But also, B, it seems like. Even though armor was kind of totally missing from like the last two major US tournaments, it seemed like there was a lot of buzz in the competitive community about kind of running armor skews as like a counter meta pick. People have been point. talking about it a lot behind the scenes for sure. Yeah. because uh, it seems like people have been kind of forgetting that it's a thing. And and slowly over time, you know, last year at Worlds the big focus was on Dark Troopers. So like everybody was bringing impact weapons. You know, everybody was getting impact grenades. HH12s, all that stuff, uh, yep. and it's it's kind of faded over time, and uh, there there was a lot of there was a lot of behind the scenes buzz about people running armor skews kind of in response to people cutting those impact weapons. So I was trying to get like two st steps ahead of that um, and bring saber throw. And so far, it looks like that was actually like a decent call. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I don't feel great about running up against like Cassian or something like that without barrier. But yeah, that that that's not ideal. But you know, we'll see. I have I do have like five six man um units in here with courage mitigation and a lot of durability. So it could be one of those situations where like, all right, Cassian picks up a couple models on the first two turns, and by that point I'm in range three and just yeah, firing on all cylinders and rebels are dying. Right. So yeah. that's my hope. Anyway, we'll see whether that hopefully I don't have to like find out if that's gonna work out that way. <laughs> but anyway, that's my list. You know, it's fair. Yeah, I tried a lot of different things. I just I don't know. 
just just didn't work. I tried a bunch of different empire lists. Um, and ultimately, too, it was a painting consideration. All this stuff is painted. So, yeah. and I, the gene, I did, I made a lot of progress on the gene oceans, but I just couldn't, you know, here's my, here's one of my synth wave gene oceans. Synth -wave. Probably not, probably not coming through that great. Looks but, purple and red. Yeah, it's purple and red and blue and yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm back at Anakin and I've, I've got a lot of reps with it. I know it's good. I know people are going to be prepared for it, but what do you do? Yeah. All right. That's me. That is you? you. Yeah. I mean, I'm on the little green dude. It's the year of the little green dude. And um, I definitely waffled a bunch, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's the best list, but I do think it's my best list. Okay. That's, uh, frankly, uh, the most relevant thing. I think. Yeah, yeah. I did make uh, some kind of like quality of life swaps on the regular Yoda May list I've been running. Um, so I, I've got one RPS and two DC-15s this time. I did not take the Z6s. Um, partly because I wanted to have a more reliable answered armor. Partly because I've been finding in a lot of my games that... Uh, range four just feels like it matters even more now than it used to. Um, and just being able to like, you know, suppress a pike unit or force like ex sage shields down before the big fight is like kind of a big deal, you know. Um, so if you can get them to like burn a couple and make the like recharging the shields kind of like awkward for them. You know, that kind of is put you in a good point. Um, I also swapped out force guidance for burst of speed and dropped seize the initiative is probably the bigger change, which I'm not sold on, but I do think is necessary. I I I lose I lose multiple surge tokens every turn, but um the DC 15s hopefully help make up for that because they got critical on them. I mean you lose two, right? Yes, I lose two, but I also could which have is, phased, which is I also lot. could have phased two out. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm like, I'm down like half my surge tokens, okay. which is, which is not. It's relevant. It is relevant, um, but I'm sort of feeling like with the present meta, I, I, the Yod Melis cannot stand up to the Anakin balls and the Pike balls, and I don't think they can even stand up to EXD in a traditional gunfight. I think Yoda's got to put a lot of those games on his back by actually getting in there. Um, and what I was finding is that without burst of speed, that's not. It's difficult. It's it's a, it's significantly more difficult to find that opening when you need it. You know, when you've got burst of speed and you've got like burst of speed two pip into his one pip, it's <laughs> he's all across the board very quickly. You know, oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, so I definitely. Um, I'm leaning into that a little bit more this time, uh, but I, I think the list kind of maintains its um, its structure while hopefully having a little bit more aggression for what I think is going to probably be required in the matchups that I think I'm going to need it in. So let's see. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So uh, I am, I don't know, are you bringing the same list to Swiss on uh, Thursday? Yeah. Mm. mostly because i don't feel like bringing multiple things i don't have the organizational ability to handle that and i'm also flying with my two-year-old so fair enough fair enough i'm playing kenobi padme okay with a bunch of medics in the swiss portion um which i'm very excited about because i haven't really got to try it out in a tournament setting i almost registered it for the main event but I'm not convinced. I haven't put it through its bases enough to be completely honest. It was on my list of things to do pre worlds, and I just didn't get to it. So, um, I I really hope that I I'm not like three games deep on Thursday and like regretting what I registered. <laughs> um, but that's totally possible. Do you do you want to borrow my Obi Wan? He's never seen a table. I would love it if he did. That's the S in Obi Wan. Yes. Yeah. It's... 
man, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a gift, Kyle. Um, I would love to, to, he even with the, with his basing and stuff actually probably fits in with my army um, just fine too, as far as basing goes. Yeah. I'll, uh, I haven't, I haven't actually like finished the base yet, but I'll, I'll finish the base and uh, put him in my case. We'll put, we'll put Kenobi. Yeah. We're putting Kenobi on the table. Uh, It might not be in the main event, but definitely, um, definitely looking forward to doing that because I do think that that list has legs. Um, Yeah, I agree. If I'd had more practice with it, I think I would have considered that. Make every Cassian player shake in their boots. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm like, man, I don't want to face Cassian. If I was running Obi Wan, I'd be like, oh yeah, Cassian. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think just from kind of like theory crafting and stuff, I think it's entirely possible that if you've got enough medics in your list, Kenobi is just better than Anakin. Um, from a damage mitigation to your shooting units perspective. Um, I think it he, depends a lot on your guardian saves. Yeah. I guess um, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, as long as Kenobi is healthy, like you're going to, you're rolling saves either way yeah kenobi just shaves an additional three off the top every time and 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 obviously two of the three that he shaves off go to him um right so but but i think you know uh i think these lists you you put somewhere between three and five medics in them and all of a sudden kenobi's a nine to like 11 hit point guardian battery yeah. with with, with Pierce Reisu. yeah it's like yeah. all of a sudden like it's not very um because you're not really rolling a casino slot sort of situation when you're only rolling two dice every time right, right. like so you can sort of decide when you don't want to do it anymore right you just stop doing it you just, you're just like okay kenobi's down to like four hit points and i've used my medic charges like my clones will just roll their saves normally now right and none of them are dead so, <laughs> so have fun <laughs> i know by the way maybe you've been like deflecting some hits back during yeah, that time like, period. like if you're, if you if you do it three times and shave nine off the top, you dodge three of them. Like on average, you're dealing one wound back. Like th- that's like not trivial, specifically against all of these armies that are, um, like defensive teched up. Like dealing, like taking a model off the board and a pike or clone like mirror match gunfight that is completely unavoidable is and sometimes you spike hard yeah you know sometimes it's not one it's like four right yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're like oh i guess i just lost like the equivalent of a squad over two shots I'm like uh-oh yeah Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah even if it's like two right you're talking right. about clones or something that that hurts it's a big it's it's a big deal when your shooting is doing the damage back to you. It's not a good look. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 looking forward to trying that. Uh, I look uh, forward to seeing how it is. Hopefully, I don't have to play against you. You are playing Thursday, right? I am. Uh, if we're gonna I play, let's play whether... Thursday. That's true. Yeah, or it's Sunday. Or Sunday. Yeah. Uh, I can't decide whether it's a good idea to be playing Thursday or not. Playing what? Playing on Thursday. Um, oh. I mean, don't get me wrong. Reps are always good. I I was thinking about this in advance, though. Like, that's going to... It's a four... If it When I originally signed up for it, I think in my head it was like a three-game situation. Four games. I'm going to be honest. I'm... Even regardless of my record, towards the end of that day, I may drop before the fourth round. Yeah, um, that's fair. I, I considered I, the same thing also. Like it just even if you're like three and or something, yeah. I just it, don't get burnt out on that. But uh, but yeah. I, I don't know about you, but my generally my worst games of the tournament are like my early games. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of shake off the rust of not playing for like a week. And yeah, um, and I guess to your point, it's not like you have to play all four games. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm just clearly not in the saying, hey, people, you should drop the last round. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I mean, like, 
if I'm feeling tired around 6 p.m. and we've got another round to go, I'll I might just pack it in and go to bed by eight. You know. Yeah, get some dinner and go to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because getting getting sleep at these things is something I think that uh, you know. Don't get me wrong. There's like a certain age bracket where. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. We're we're not in that age. Yeah, I'm anymore. no longer in that. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It'll be great. I'm not like actually regretting it. I was just I was looking at those four rounds and being like, Whew, uh <laughs> and this is this is before the like the real you know quote unquote real tournament starts even. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'll it'll be fun. I'm. It's been a few months since I've actually played Anakin Padme in a tournament, so shake off the rust a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm sure get those get those prize tickets, you know. That's right. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to see exactly how that works or it looks what like the prizes are. Yeah, and I, I don't know if there's like a way to get it 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 doesn't seem like there's prizes available other than the prize wall prizes kind of, kind or like unclear. the first place trophy. Uh, you know, it's it doesn't seem like there's like a, a set of alt arts or whatever for the top four type of thing, like you know, would have been historically done. Um, I don't know that that's a good or bad, but it seems like if you want prizes, it, the excuse me, the prize wall is your option. So, yeah, I, that seems, sort of seems a little. <laughs> I, I think, think we'll find out more, I guess, when we get there. Uh, yeah. it's we basically have no idea what the prizes are. So they have said they've they've done some like overall general discussion. Like they said, like dice, alt arts, um, mats, sidebars. They didn't call them sidebars, obviously, because that's what we call them. <laughs> but uh, essentially, table runners, I think, is what they call them. But that sounds like a sidebar. Um. But yeah, they didn't like actually show us any pictures or describe in any more detail what those are. I think my my biggest concern about how the the prize situation is that like the the prize wall doesn't sound like it's anything that's particularly game specific. And that like if I got tickets playing Star Wars Legion, I could probably get MCP prizes with those tickets. Um, right. Yeah. And then it's like an AMG prize wall. And I guess mm, just wondering like how much variety will actually, if if it's like a buy stuff off the wall sort of situation. I mean, if and it's stuff if, like alt arts and dice and stuff, that's going to be half the, that's going to have to be somewhat game specific, right? That, well, that's what, well, well, I guess what I mean is like, what, I, what I'm trying to articulate is like, I don't know how many different like alt arts might be available for Legion. Like it only might be like one or two cards. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Right. Or, you know, like one or two for like each game. Like I, I have no idea, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll, we'll see what, what happens. I think there, there's like mats and stuff you can get too, which I yep. guess is cool. Um, All right. Should we talk about the faction breakdown real quick? Yeah. Cause it, it is, it is not, exactly what i expected it to be um it's pretty close i think to it i think there's so here here let's just yeah. let's just read it what it is republic 79 so that's not quite a third of the total population empire is actually more at 81 rebels at 44 um separatists at about 40 you can't actually see the number at least i can't uh it, it looks to be about 40 and then mercenaries at 18 which is shadow collective because yeah. e- ewoks are included in the rebel total and wookies are included in the republic total yeah i think the two things here that stick out to me is i think there are there are more empire lists by probably about 15 than i expected there to be and there's more separatist lists by probably about 10 than I expect there to be. Um, it's 10 experimental droids players. I know there, I know, I know a lot of like very serious competitive players that don't typically play droids that made, I don't want to say last minute because I also know that they've been like practicing these lists over the last month or two, but yeah, um, you know, in the grand scheme of, of the season, 
uh, recent pivots to droids and more specifically to experimental droids. So, yeah, I'm expecting to see some crazy win rates out of the experimental droids list, frankly. Um, probably on par with oh, potential. I think it's potentially on par with like the win rates we saw out of Blizzard. I think, yeah. um, I don't want to like sound alarm bells and stuff quite yet, but that's it's really int- good. <laughs> it is really good. And it's interesting too, because it's been something that has been, I mean, we don't need to extensively talk about it on this cast because we've talked about it previously, but it it is something that has been like legal, you know, for as long as Wookiees, the Wookiee battle force, mm-hmm, the same time mm-hmm. period. And for whatever reason, it's only been somewhat recently that people have been actually running the, like the all in on the BX commandos archetype and most of the recent like really successful archetypes that I've seen don't have any Magna Guard in them at all. Mm-hmm. Like um, literal zero. Li- yes, literally zero. It's like three BXs, two B2s, two B1s, a super tech, and a regular T series. Yeah. And then sometimes I've seen people also, I guess over in Europe, it's a, this is a little more popular, but working in like the snail tank. Yeah, my understanding is the Europeans have been more on two BXs than one snail tank. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how many of those got registered, but yeah. Um, but regardless, no Magnus. Which, yeah, which which it seems like the, you know the battle force is like supposed to highlight. So that's what people were trying for the first few months of its existence, and it's only recently I think that people have sort of discovered maybe is the wrong word, but popularized this, uh, like really hyper effective kind of subgenre of this battle force um and I, I yeah i don't think we've fully seen it's it's uh destructive power yet. <laughs> this could be yeah. like the, the coming out party for experimental droids we'll see. i i sort of expect it to be to be honest um i i'm ex- i'm expecting that at least half those separatist lists that are registered are probably exd and i think um i think separatist win rates might I expect them to be the best in the tournament. On a, on well, a per, per on a per per like list per list basis. basis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm willing to take that called shot when we, okay, we, when we go over the stats. Um, but yeah, yeah, that seems entirely plausible to me, based on everybody's recent experience with this particular version of experimental droids yeah i i it's been a while since i've seen people this high on a list to be honest in in mass i think the last time with blizzard force yeah 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 it feels very similar in that regard it Uh, does have i will say it is slightly weak to armor skews which which is great because like 60% 60% of everything that got posted in Adepticon chat in the Discord today was <laughs> Some kind of stuff, armor stuff. So um, I'm all about it. I took an RPS and I've got Echo, so I'm 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 sitting pretty. Yeah, I took um, Saber Throw and Impact yeah, Grenades. So yeah. like, um, seems, it seems like that might have been a good call. But yeah, it's all like aggressive armor skews too. Like Dark Troopers, buses. Oh, yeah. There's like four or five different bus lists that people posted. Uh, and like in-your-face bus lists too. Not, yeah. not that there's, I don't know if there's like a different way to do a bus list because that seems to be what they're designed for. <laughs> but, um, and then like Tempest Force, ATSTs with grenade launchers and stuff. Like these massive, aggressive, in-your-face armor skews that we really haven't seen very much recently. And everybody seems to have kind of on their, I don't want to say on their own because obviously competitive players run in circles, not run in circles, that's the wrong. That is absolutely the wrong terminology. Um <laughs> maybe pun intended there they uh talk and communicate in various circles that kind of like overlap with each other um so you know i don't want to say like everyone's independently kind of arrived at an armor skew as a counter meta choice but it's definitely been percolating and a lot of people seem to have ended up there so i think i think the one of the main reasons for that i think a lot of people are frustrated with this meta uh, with how yeah. defense, defensive it is specifically, and it's really hard to run lists that aren't defensive unless you're packing armor. Yes, that's fair. Um, like it's really the only th- like super aggressive thing, like minus like melee. Like you kind of have to be in a melee skew or an armor skew situation. To, you can't be taken like 
the Johnny flexible lists of, of, of old and hope to stand up to some of these guidelines. It's just not going to work. No, it really doesn't. Unfortunately, <laughs> which is sad for me. Cause that's what I, that was the archetype that I enjoyed. But yeah. Take a commander then take your operative force user or whatever. And, and then fill know. it out, fill it out with some flexible stuff. Yeah. yeah it doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't fly anymore. Those days are. Yeah. Anyhow. Um, yep that's the faction breakdown yeah I, i'm not surprised by the large number of republic i do think also a significant portion of those are probably wikis uh, yeah. I, I mean it's don't get me wrong it's not like half right yeah yeah i, I mean i could see like maybe 10 to 15 but that still seems high to me well but even if it is like 10 you know that then that brings the quote-unquote clone number down to like the 70. 60s yeah which is still more than the the quote unquote white save factions, but significantly less than Empire. So yeah, I'm really surprised Empire is so high. Like, I'm not. Empire's always been popular. It's even, definitely even been when popular. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Uh, all I'm saying is that my arcs are gonna probably be loving it. They're gonna love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm alright with it. If yeah. I can, uh, inquisitors. I don't. I don't know about inquisitors. I have yet to actually face them. With you're Anakin. gonna have way more of a problem than I'm gonna have. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel great about having to like punch them to death, which is what I'm gonna have to do basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, like Yoda and the arcs are just way better at that than Anakin. Yes, one hundred percent. So I, we'll see. They only came out like three days ago. So I don't I don't know how many people are actually like seriously running them, but I don't think they're out yet. I don't I don't think they're out until Thursday. No, they really. I think I I have them on pre order, and I haven't got a notification that the store has got them yet. I don't think they technically release until Thursday. I I could be wrong about that. Let me okay. let me let me look. Um, yeah, because their official release date was supposed to be last you know three days ago Friday. And AMG came out basically publicly and said that that was not going to slip any further. So, oh, maybe maybe I've got this backwards or something. Um, I definitely was under the expectation that, like, it wasn't that it got pushed back to like a day or two before the event. Um, they're not up for pre-order, so on the site, so maybe maybe they're actually out. Um, yeah. But point is, like, that's a pretty tight turnaround. I mean, you, you would have to really want to play Inquisitors to be playing Inquisitors at Worlds. So, not that two models is like a, a brush job to paint. Yeah. And that their rules have been out for a while, so you certainly could have been practicing with proxies up until this point. But I don't know. I can, I considered it. I just I don't. I was, I was trying to make so many other things work. I didn't. I didn't have time to like you know, fully flesh out the Inquisitor concept. So my hot take here, which I think we've talked about probably before, is that I just don't think they're good enough, even though they are incredibly efficient for what they are. They're in they're in a faction that requires you to surround them with a shell that is just not very good. Yeah. Um and they're they're exceptionally good aggressive force user counters. But the, Aggressive force users are like not a thing right now. Yeah, they just don't. <laughs> so, they don't really like. The only Jedi that are really seen table time are Republic Jedi for the most part. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a solution to a problem that hasn't existed for at least six months, if not longer. So, R.I.P. Force Choke. Uh, yeah. Um, which was a much more targeted way to. You know, to the extent that if you think aggressive force users were a problem, that was a much more targeted way than just releasing it. <laughs> Inquisitors as a <laughs> I've never been a fan of like releasing a unit as specifically as a counter unit for balance. Sure. Yeah. I think that that's fair. Um but it didn't work in this case anyway, because it's not a thing anymore. So well, it, it's a little bit like it's a little awkward too, because if they ever if if they were to like unnerf force choke, for example, or if they were to try and make aggressive force users great again so to speak i think they're gonna have a really hard time doing that for as long as inquisitorious training is the language that it is and for as long as inquisitors exist 
Yeah, it should be mentioned too that uh, we do get uh, forum clarifications on uh, inquisitorious training on whether it proct multiple times if you've got multiple inquisitors in the bubble. And the answer was yes. And the answer is yes. Um, it you does. Get to, you get to roll multiple dice, which gives you like a ninety-five percent chance to make that happen. I think maybe it's ninety. It's what? I think it's close to ninety. Okay. Is it really that high? Yeah, it's here. Let me just do the just, It's just two thirds, because you'd have to roll two. You'd have to roll two blanks. It's it's one third times one third, is your chance. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's probably it's like eighty something. It's like eighty seven point five, ish, roughly. Maybe it's less than that. Eighty nine, eighty nine percent. Okay, I was close. So yeah, it, you've got an eighty nine percent chance to cancel a force power if both inquisitors are in the same spot, basically. Seems good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they also released a clarification on how the token generation looping thing works. The short version is if you take a, if you get a token by taking an immobilized token, that token does not trigger another instance of the immobilized token thing. Mm. Um, okay. It sounds more complicated than it is because the language on the card is much more complicated than it needs to be. But basically what it boils down to is like the most tokens you can get at once is four. If brother has offensive defensive stance, okay, but that's that's the that's the TLDR. Okay, cool. So no infinite tokens. Yeah, I mean nobody expected it to be infinite. No, the question but... was always like, what is the number? Uh, yeah. Because it, clearly it's not infinite, but it's also not like one. Right. <laughs> so you know, it definitely where... isn't one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where do you? Where's the line? How, how do you word it to, to make a line, basically, is yeah. what people were wondering. So, All right. Uh, should we talk about the Galactic Conquest rules? <laughs> yeah. We can do it. <laughs> so there's there are basically two rules that the community has been routinely not using. Uh, pretty much almost universally, at least in the United States, for major tournaments. Yeah, and, I can't really talk to the, like, if they use them overseas or whatever, because they might be, but... Maybe. Um, my understanding is mostly they have not been, but uh, basically those two rules are, and this has been out for more than a year at this point, I think. I think this is pretty much since AMG took the game, for the most part. Very close to it. It's not quite that far, but it's definitely, like, pre-CRB. Yes. Yeah. Um. So the first one... And I think this will be simpler to talk about. So maybe we start with this one. Is simply that um, intentional draws are allowed. So there's there's been a wide range of community uh, custom solutions to like how to handle draws. One has been essentially like you know natural draws. In other words, like if you play a game out and you still end up as a draw, like that's okay. Yeah, it just affects no. the Swiss. Yep. Um, but intent drawing on purpose, in other words, agreeing with your opponent to draw the game um, before you play, or I guess at some point during the game, not allowed. Um, that's been like one implementation of this. Um, there have been also other ways of being like there's there are no draws, you know, so you got to roll a dice. Yep. Some some have done before the game, some have done after the game, some have done like you use SOS basically. Um, but what has never actually been used in practice is the fact that in the Galactic Conquest rules, it says that you can just agree with your opponent to draw. Mm -hmm. You don't have to play. Um, you don't. Maybe you play three rounds and you agree with your opponent to draw. I don't know, but basically, like you can, you can simply agree to not play the game and just take a draw. Um, it's sort of unclear how much. This is, first of all, I think that's really stupid. <laughs> From a, I think it. I think it depends on the format. I think that sure. the format of tournaments, I think, impacts whether it feels really stupid or not. Yeah, and maybe that's where this gets into like, this could end up basically not mattering. It, I think, it but, is pretty unlikely to matter. Yeah, this is going to depend ultimately on how many players show up, how many rounds get played, which is also not entirely certain at this yep. point, which is like a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, how many pair downs win? Uh, because basically your record they're cutting down to 
32 from yes. Friday to Saturday, but your record will persist from Friday to Saturday. And then they're cutting down to four on Sunday. So basically, like if you lose a game or more likely draw a game on Friday at any point in the course, whether of the day, it's intentional or not, right? Um, you likely will not be able to make Sunday, even if you make the cut from Friday to Saturday. Yeah, um, I th- I am, it's it's pretty unlikely you're even going to make the cut for Saturday. But if by some chance you do, you definitely will not be able to make the cut on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it, it, outside there's like a Kessel Run type of chance that the stars may align and you could make it, but it would the chance is like winning the lottery right now making going to friday to saturday with a x and one or x and o and one record is much more likely i think you're actually almost guaranteed to make it if you're x and o and one because there will only be like 16 or 17 four nos yeah i mean it depends it's it's pretty dependent on if there are three or four rounds if there are four rounds it is likely that a, a draw will get you into the second day but if there are only three rounds draws are pretty much deal yeah two going two and oh and one is not going to get you into the day two right yeah um <clears throat> right now it looks more likely that there's going to be four rounds than three it, I, it depends on how many people actually show up i think uh there's 270 people that have registered lists yeah. on game up link and based um, on like traditional attrition, we're actually going to be very close. Yes. Um, so I, hard to say. I I think is we yeah. based on based on the attrition last year for Adepticon. If we attrish have the same percentage of attrition for Worlds last year, we will only be playing three rounds this year. Yeah, I mean the traditional sort of uh, number that gets thrown out there is like ten to fifteen percent. I, th- I think that's high for like an invite only tournament. I agree. Um, particularly in this case, an invite only tournament where a specific number of people had over- have already taken the steps to register and submit a list. Um, and that number is essentially it's 274 because they're also going to bring in four people from, from um, last chance. Last chance. Yep. So they'd have to lose more than 17 players for it to be three rounds. Yep. There were already two or three today on the Discord. Yeah, um, I mean, it's possible that happens. Yep, I, I think so, it'd be much cleaner if it did. Frankly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I, it definitely would be also not, a less long day. Frankly, yeah, not that I want to like root for people to not be able to make it because okay. I'm definitely not doing that. I hope that everybody that wants to come is able to come. Um, but from a tournament structure perspective, it's going to be pretty awkward if we got to play four rounds on Friday. You know, especially since the records carry over. I don't really know what the benefit of cutting to a clean Swiss number and cutting to 32 is if you're going to, like, make the records persist. <laughs> I don't really see the, you know... I, have I don't understand nice why that's a thing. This, so I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I just, I don't understand. There's no... There's no benefit to that. You're, make, you're, you're bringing in 17 to 18 people over from day one that have no no chance to advance um, and you're cutting to a clean swiss number in the process where you, i don't know I, like if you're going to do that just let everybody play and anyway whatever um uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh okay you're right i don't have anything good to say about that topic <laughs> yep so I, I, just, like, I, don't, I don't know i don't know what else we could say that no. just, yeah 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 um okay so yeah, intentional draws could matter. There's there's like a world based on the records where you get, I think something like six, like five or six, three and O's going into, or maybe two and O's. I don't I don't remember. Basically, going into the last round on Saturday, you could have a situation where there's there's like you know you're cutting to four, and there's like six X and O's. Yes. Meaning, um. Like if some of those players draw, they could essentially just guarantee that they make the next day. Yeah, and I'm gonna be honest. I actually don't have an issue with that. I know I know that there are people that do. I think that if you are in a position 
where you can intentionally draw into a top eight, that is fine. You have already essentially made the cut. Sure. I think it gets weird where if you get like, and again, I, I wish that I had the specific, somebody actually ran the numbers on this and looked mm -hmm. at like the chances of getting all these records. But basically there's a chance where you get like an odd number yes. of X and O's and then somebody gets a pair down. Yep. And then obviously like that person can't just intentionally draw with their opponent because their opponent has no shot at making day two. Right. Somebody's playing um, spoiler. Right. So that person has to win. And then, you know, the other, however many players it is that end up getting paired up against the other X and O's basically can just choose to intentionally draw and make it in. Yep. Um, so that, I don't know that that's like a, a likely scenario based on how many players we have, but it's definitely possible depending on which pair downs lose and when. Yep. Um, and I think that would be super awkward, you know, because you've got you've got some players that can draw into the cut and some players that have to, you know, that are also undefeated that have to play into the cut simply because they got matched up against, you know, somebody else that doesn't have the same record, isn't it? So. Yeah, definitely awkward. I think I think this is compounded by the fact that this is not like a normal thing for our community. I think in yeah. in in most places where intentional drawing is like acceptable, it's just like a thing that happens all the time, and it's like, yep, they intentionally draw drew into the top eight, like that's fine. Um, uh, uh, yeah, um, I, we're also we generally. A lot of our tournaments, though less of them this year, are generally like single elimination, basically, as far as um, making cuts and stuff have gone traditionally. The, yeah. we, we've recently had a lot of X and one formats, which are beautiful. Love them. Please keep doing them. Um, but I think in, in formats that are essentially not really Swiss anymore in for in the in that like we're like people that are not X and O can end up winning the tournament. Um, intentional drawing makes a, at least as a rule makes more sense. I think we can talk about the ethicality. Uh, is that a word uh, of it? I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't really have an issue with it, but I, I get, I get people's, I get people's concerns. They, it's not fun. I, I think, yeah, I don't think there's anything inherently in a competitive environment wrong necessarily with the concept of intentional draws i think that legion as a game and the tournament structure for legion is not set up for that yeah i think this tournament definitely isn't like i don't right. i yeah. like um this this tournament is functionally a single elimination format <laughs> like, yes it, you know it it's so it's really weird that this is also the first tournament where intentional draws are like yeah you can do that um but that's just because yeah. we've ignored them for the past year and a half yeah i just i don't see the benefit i don't think there is one i i, I don't think i don't think that's the point either i think the point is that it's in the galactic conquest document and sure. they didn't change it and that's what we're using right like i think that's the only reason this is a thing um yeah although as we'll get to in a minute we are they are still ultimately creating exceptions <laughs> the galactic conquest document so um this isn't quite as simple as just like yep 100 galactic I, conquest. that's yeah. the letter of the law i i know I, uh, I... all right well i guess let's just do it okay. so the other thing that the community has not done yet and will now be doing in this tournament um yeah i guess it's worth mentioning too that amg is actually going to be toing this tournament Yes. Which, um, you know, I, I don't want to like read into cause and effect or anything. You know, we don't have any insight into behind the scenes stuff. Um, but the end result is we, we have the Galactic Conquest rules, which is what we're talking about now. So, yes. Um, That's really, I think, yeah, it seems like the only reason that it, like, if AMG was not running this, it sort of feels like we'd be in normal mode, you know? We'd be just doing what we normally do. Yeah. 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 Um, and again, uh, you know, cause and effect, who knows, but yep. that's what we have. That's the, that's the end state we're left with, regardless of how we got there. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, the time, the time thing. So the time the, thing. 
I'm, that's what I'm calling it because I don't actually know what it's officially called. Uh, but basically what this amounts to is that so that there's two portions of this that are in the Galactic Conquest rules and a third that will be used that is not, which is where we get into this is not quite 100% Galactic Conquest. So the first is that the time will be started uh, secretly. So players will not know when time is started. Um, the EO, TO, whatever they're called, is not allowed to announce how much time is left or tell anybody how much time is left. Uh, Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> are, uh, we, are we allowed to curse right now? Because this was... <laughs> I... Yeah, let me just... <laughs> I'm not going to curse, but this will be another thing where, like... I, well, let's let's fully flesh this out, but yeah. I don't see the benefit of that. Um, anyway, well, so, I think we can, we can talk about the benefits. Let's 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 talk about it, and or at least what the desired benefits. Of okay, this that's are. fair because because I do think the desired benefits are clear. Sure, but let's get both components of it out there first. Yes. So that's the first one. Um, the time has started secretly. Uh, players are not told how much time is left uh, ever until time expires. Um, the second is that the EO, TO, whoever rolls five red dice, mm. and if they roll any blocks, those are minutes that are added to the invisible time limit. Yep. It's it's essentially like zero plus zero to five minutes. Right. Which is which is not a lot. This feels like less of a big deal to me than the fact that the time limit is essentially hidden. I think, yeah, I think the random timer thing is incredibly stupid, but doesn't matter. Um, yeah, like the game state is unlikely to change in the space of zero to five minutes. And it's and as long as you know that the 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 game has like a zero to five minute like thing on the end, you can kind of like just I don't know, you can sort of account for that when you're you 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 know that like when you get to the, you know what is it two and a half hours that you might only have you might have two and a half hours you might have 235 but you but at least you know that right you have um, you still have sort of like an end point that you can work towards yeah. yeah um but not telling people where the round starts man like what i mean like part of me is like okay practice in in practice like what does that actually look like like they're not gonna start at 20 minutes late you know so like and and i think they can't start it early right they, it has to be started like after they do pairings right so so like i don't know it, it, that aspect to it also sort of feels a little bit like we can kind of figure this out anyways like why are we being yeah like your your minimum time is two and a half hours from when pairings are announced and that's and that's what you should just go on like you have two yep. and a half hours from when the game up link is posted go if you get more than that hallelujah you yeah. know um and i i don't know they ha it seems like i mean i'm sure players are just gonna set their own timers or look at a watch my own timer yeah I, I, every round the two and a half hours as soon as game up link i'm gonna start it on my iphone it's just gonna sit there next to the table and Make sure your opponent knows you're doing this, by the way. Yes. If yeah. you do it, um, this, <laughs> I don't want to get into this whole separate conversation, but some people have, have said that it could be like basically unsportsmanlike to do that. I, this gets into like a whole other thing of how silly this don't, whole concept is. Don't be a douchebag. Like we're pay, playing Legion together. We don't right. like the, the idea that people would get a bent out of shape about putting a timer down on the table to like keep track of it. Like seems absurd to me, but people have talked about it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Le Legion is like supposed to be like a, yes, it's, it's competitive and you're facing off against someone and one of, one of you ultimately is going to win and one of you isn't. You know, hopefully you don't draw. Um, But like, it is any miniatures game is based on a collaborative social contract. Yeah. And and Legion has a defined endpoint after six rounds. And it's always been my understanding. You know, maybe not everyone agrees with this, but my goal is always to get to a complete result, to always get to six rounds. And um, even if that ends up with me losing, right? Yeah. Like I want to finish. 
I want to make sure that we finish. Um, so I'm always, you know, hassling is maybe the wrong word, but I'm always like making sure that my opponent and I both know like how we're progressing through the game and, you know, how much time we have left. Cause my goal is always to get to six rounds. I'm glad you bring this up because I think that this is actually like, this is the, this is clearly targeted at trying to deal with, and I, I don't even know if deal is the right word because I don't really think it's as big of a problem as most people like let on about it. Um, it's slow play. It is like this is this is targeted so that people don't know when the round is going to end, so they can't plan on it. <laughs> that that seems like sort of to come Which... from a misunderstanding of how Legion games, like the arc of of who's winning and losing, tends to go. Yes, no doubt. Like it, <laughs> like like it, I don't. I mean. If that's not what this is trying to solve, I have no idea what it could be trying to solve. Like, fr frankly, like it, I, th it, I think it, they've said that this is what it's trying to solve, right? I think so. I mean, I've heard people say that, but I don't think I've heard AMG say that. Okay. Um, this is a thing in X-wing too, right? I I th think it's there is a similar thing in X-wing. Okay. Um, X-wing's a little bit different in that there is at least my understanding of at least the old X-Wing rules is a little different because there was there used to be like unlimited number of turns in the game. There was no defined endpoint. There was no defined yeah. endpoint. Yeah. Um, so you could, you know, conceivably have infinite turns as long as you were within the timer. Um and you could have a situation too where like who's winning and losing is actually gonna maybe drastically is the wrong word, but significantly change over a course of a five to ten minute time period. Yes, absolutely. Be just because of how quickly things happen in that game. Yep. Um, where in, in Legion, like that's generally not the case. <laughs> you know, if you're winning like right now, you're probably still winning 10 minutes from now <laughs> in Legion generally. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that Legion, as far as slow play is concerned, it's usually one of those situations where like if that's a thing that would actually benefit one player over the other, and often it's not, but it's a situation where um, there, there's like an arc, a linear arc to the game, basically. We're yes. like, we're like one player is, is happy with the status quo and one player is not, right? And usually with the, the player that's not, they just, they need to get to that complete result to change the status quo. And yes. the player that is happy with the status quo like that that status quo is not likely to drastically change until close to the end of the game. You know, maybe it's an aggressive list that likes to rush the objectives early. Um, whatever. But it's not something that like whipsaws back and forth, you know, every every three to five minutes. No. Um Legion just doesn't not that there's not a lot of action in Legion, but there is. But it it tends to happen like in I don't know. It's it's there's a climax to the game yes. where the where the underdog um, you know, makes makes the play that is the risky thing that they had to do in order to flip the table, flip flip the flip the kind of positions, right? And and generally, you're building up to it over the first four turns. Sometimes you don't build up to it, and it flips early, right? It flips on turn two, and like, you know, the other person then has to build it. And sometimes there are like multiple kind of like crests to this, but generally there is one and it's pretty clear that once somebody's succeeded or failed it in that critical set of uh, activations or sometimes it's just, you know, your force user goes and the game just swills. Right. Yep. And um, after that, the game's, maybe not completely over but it's mostly over right and and you're you're building a game state to end up in what that position looks like for a large majority of the game um yeah i like i like that phrasing because that that is kind of how legion works you're building up to something basically uh, yeah you're, you're at least with a lot of traditional lists there are definitely lists that don't function that way but um, and, you know, our much more swingy melee skews and stuff are generally much more, I think, more in like the X-Wing vein, if that's the analogy we want to use, where it's like, yeah. you know, sometimes you kill a unit and then you kind of like work your way back into it. And then, you know, it can get messy. Um, but mostly, see, yeah. Yeah. But and seesaws do happen, but they tend to happen over like longer timescales. Yeah. Like over, over a turn or two. 
it, you know it's like an accumulation of things that happens over time rather than like this you know within a single turn like multiple whipsaws back and forth so yeah at the end of the day what has been put in place for this tournament in the general galactic conquest rules like does not if the, if this is a problem which yeah. i think is a question that's up for debate in and of itself um this definitely does not solve it no <laughs> it is definitely whether whether there is a thing to be solved or not this is not the solution <laughs> Uh, yeah, if if somebody if it benefits someone to slow play now, you know, at the whatever the current game state is, it's likely going to be to, to that player's benefit to continue slow playing in 15 minutes. Well, not only that, but you are taking away the information the people if, if someone is slow playing, you are taking away valuable information for the person who is being the victim of right. said slow play to actually understand what the situation is that they are in. And if, if my opponent is slow playing and I have no idea how much time is left in the game, how am I supposed to like have Our, any chance at dealing with that? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, and people have been like, well, just call a judge and tell them your opponent's slow playing and a, like you're effectively accusing your opponent of cheating. And there's, there's no more way to like immediately, <laughs> permanently flip the social dynamic to extremely awkward than to yeah. do that uh and again we just mentioned that this is a social contract right um yeah. the second thing is like what you know what's a judge really supposed to do other than like watch you with a stopwatch which is which has been done before but only in like top eight games that we've had the staff to be able to watch because there's only four games going. yeah and it, effectively what you're doing there is chess clocks yes right? that's exactly what it's, yeah, it's you're just players. you're you're running chess clocks in the background and like calling a judge and asking them to penalize somebody for slow play in a world where a you're not using chess clocks but it, uh, and or b like the, the timer is hidden from the players is like a football team getting mad at a rough for not calling their opponent out of bounds when there's no lines on the field. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> frankly, I mean, like, not I'm not gonna call names or anything. I I at last worlds I called the judge for I was concerned about slow play. The fact of the matter is there was 64 or I don't know how many games were going on that day, but there was, you know, 64 plus games that this four to six judges were responsible for. They couldn't babysit my table. They had other problems. Yeah. You know, they couldn't, despite me calling judges over two to three times, nothing happened. And um, uh, it is what it is, but like, um, it, that's just it's not really a reasonable way to deal with the situation frankly no and the nice thing too about like chess clocks solve intentional slow play right because everything is each person's time they also solve unintentional slow play which i feel like is a much more significant problem and that's basically just that like and i know i've been guilty of this sometimes you just don't realize how long it's taking you to do stuff the majority of slow play if slow play is a thing which which it, i mean slow play is a thing i just think the majority of it is not actually malicious right uh, it's just it's just people taking longer than you know they should be taking in a constrained time tournament environment yes to make decisions uh and it's it's not conscious on their part um you know their opponent might even be doing it too like at, at some tournaments sometimes you get games that are like three to four rounds and which is unacceptable he, to be very total, totally unacceptable and it, it, usually in those cases both players are slow um and if, if it is one player that's slow it's one player that is like consistently very slow and not necessarily on purpose they just take a long time to do everything right like that's not yeah. a situation where you're getting to the end of the game and like somebody's winning and they're trying to stall that's a situation where like the players are just taking too darn long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, and chess clocks solve that problem too, right? I'm, I'm not do. necessarily advocating for chess clocks, but like there are definitely solutions that are not what has been put in front of us. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I just, yeah. 
uh i don't i don't know what really more we can say about it uh but i don't know if it's going to end up mattering in like a significant amount of games particularly I, particularly if both players are like okay we have a minimum of two and a half hours let's make sure we try and work towards that to finish yeah i think I, there's definitely going to be some games where they like announce the time is called and the players are like wait what like we, you know we're only on round three like what the f- sorry i just we got it <laughs> dang it i told you we were let me let me let me time stamp about. this that yep, was yep, yep. that was not that was not one that you we can just not bleep yep. out yep. You got it. <laughs> um i mean i think my biggest concern with this isn't even from a player standpoint really i think that this is going to make it really difficult to actually run the tournament um from just keeping things organized you know when i I don't know i well on that note should we talk about the third component of this yes let's 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 talk about it so in the galactic conquest rules officially what you're supposed to do after calling time is simply allow players to finish the round yes now in legion that could be five minutes that could be an hour right I mean, if you've got no time constraints, like I, okay, let's take two hours for the last turn if it's like really matters and we need, uh, you know, I'm not advocating for that, but um, I I would say that that would not be an unreasonable thing to do if you were not time gated. Especially if you were caught by surprise by that that (laughs) time announcement. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So that was quickly identified. And again, this is the first time these rules are actually being used. Um, not sure the world championships are the best venue for testing new tournament rules, but anyway, um, that was quickly identified as being like extremely problematic for staying on schedule and making sure that the requisite number of rounds get played. Um, so they have now introduced basically reintroduced what the standard is, which is after time is called, you have 15 minutes to finish the round or you get quote unquote hard dice down now hard dice down is not i think historically people have kind of treated it as like you would just literally stop doing everything like if you have dice in your hand that you haven't rolled yet you don't roll them basically yeah. um this one is like finish the activation you're on sure now you know that could still take like five minutes it's definitely not going to take 20 <laughs> the, the funny uh, part here i think is that this is when slow play actually matters um it, during the, it, the 15 minute hard dice during, window during the yes. hard dice window is yep. actually when slow play matters and this is when people actually know how much time is left on the clock right and if, if and if and if if you think this is a problem this is actually the time you want to mask and it is not um which is not advocating for masking that either i'm i'm not i don't I'm think that's either. a real solution to the I, yeah but yeah I, again it's like a it's like trying to cover up like a like a lightsaber gash with a band-aid you know yeah. like um but it just i don't know i it just like we're yeah it's yeah and this is this is a explicit exception to the galactic conquest rules when you know yeah so with- which and this is how we've done it, and I which, don't which think is it's fine. Bad. It's it's works. in my opinion, it works. It's just yeah counter counterproductive in how the rest of if if the aim is to stop slow play when it matters, we have not actually hit the time interval in which it is super relevant. So yeah, and if the aim is to follow the Galactic Conquest rules to the letter, right? If we're if we're trying to actually do this the way that they've it's written let's let's do it that way and i i think i think at the end of the day the way i feel about this tournament as far as the rules are concerned is that if we have to have one worlds that has terrible rules for changes to get made to the galactic conquest document i am willing to accept that cost yeah I mean, and we'll see how much it ends up mattering. Yeah, it may not. I mean, again, I think a lot of this stuff is, for most people, will not affect them. I think it's uh, probably going to be like the new panic rules 
where 98% of the time it doesn't matter and the 2% of the time where it matters, it's going to be really freaking annoying. It's it's going to be the most important thing that happened in all game. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's going to feel really arbitrary and silly. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that's basically what's going to happen. Yeah, I think that that's likely. I just I think more importantly, I think outside of the game state stuff, I think this stuff's just going to cause a lot of confusion. Yes. For players and judges alike, I just think it's going to be people are not going to be used to it, which is not intrinsically a problem with the system, but um the uh, yeah, um maybe not the best place to roll it out. Um Yeah, you already have enough variables with what is officially the largest legion tournament in the game's history uh so by a significant margin i might yes. add uh which I is great which is great which is fantastic i think um this is this is like a hundred more people than last year it roughly it's, it's more 150 yeah it's almost it's like this is on an order an order of magnitude larger than last year and um last year was already a lot of people um yes so which is great, which is fantastic. I just, man, I don't envy having to organize and put it on and have all this stuff. Keeping keeping that running smoothly when you're working off players' existing habits and expectations would already be a challenge. Yes. And yeah, a lot of chaos is being injected. So yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. I am I too. I that's that's the that's the silver lining here. Yeah, we get to see everybody. We're gonna play some Star Wars Unlimited in the margins whenever that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I did optimistically sign up for like the newbie Song of Ice and Fire tournament on Sunday. I think I'm gonna drop from that, even if I don't end up making Sunday, which you know obviously you hope for but don't plan for kind of a thing. Um, just because it's unreasonable like, to plan for in in this format, right? Uh, so it's it's just one more thing so you know i might just walk around play some random pickup board games with other people that have been eliminated um you know help clean up tables whatever so yeah i think uh war for arrakis comes out on friday so uh uh i have played it oh, oh, oh do you like a physical copy yes yes oh, right, um, right. um a friend of mine is you know does all the kickstarters uh which is great um, and he's like, hey, you want to play War for Arrakis? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've actually played it twice. Uh, it's good. I mean, it's it's by the same people that do War of the Ring. Um, yeah, which is which is a phenomenal game. Which is a uh, great game. I've, I've got like it, at least 100 yeah. reps of that. And it's, it's, it's similar asymmetric feel. Yeah, man. So it has... Nissan Al-Gaib. Yep, it's got, you know, and Paul's a... Paul's on a badass and it is is appropriate. So now you go swearing again, Kyle. What's going <laughs> yeah. on? That one's not we're gonna be required to be bleeped, but yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 late. It's late. Um, we're worked up about things we care about. Yeah. We're yeah. I've got a I've got to travel in less than forty eight hours with my two year old and I still haven't packed any of my Legion stuff. So Yeah, I gotta pack my stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I have I actually have one model to paint, unfortunately. Um I have to paint my second captain model, which is he's like, I mean, he's primed and stuff, which helps. So, uh, but anyway. yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess um, I could just use the normal guy. I don't know. Yeah, I actually use my captain models as the regular leaders. I'm like sometimes in sure, maybe I could just do that. I don't know, but if I have time, which I should because it only takes like 15 minutes, I think, from are, this, from this are point, all, all of your phase one's captains, yes. I think if, if there's no differentiation between them as far as like they all have a captain in them, I don't think that's an issue personally. Yeah. I mean, but, I only have two and they're both captains. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah, maybe. Right. But if I can paint them, I'm going to paint them and use them just because I'm OCD like that. But if not, yeah, it's probably not the end of the world. You're right. Yeah. No. I'm using a captain as one of my non-captain DC-15. It's just because I like yeah. the model. They're cool. It, it is a cool model. Yeah, I actually this guy, this is not like the I kit bash is the wrong word, but I took I took the whichever guy's kneeling, I forget which one it is, and I basically mm. slapped the captain arms onto him. Yep. So that's he's like kneeling with the binox instead of the captain standing up and yeah, it looks like with the binox. Yeah, it's yeah. marginally different. No, I did and that. 
the phase one models are pretty easy to do that with. You just kind of cut the arm socket in a different place and shove it in there. So. Yeah, they were pretty good. I did that uh, the kneeling thing with a couple of the uh, the core box clones. Yeah, um, just because eh, whatever. Yeah, and now I guess I'm going to paint Obi Wan's base. I don't feel like you have to do that. Look, be it's clear. been something I've been needing to do, and he's okay. been sitting on my shelf in my to do pile for a long time. So and he's like he's like eighty percent done. All I got to do is paint that <laughs> catwalk thing. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I'll I'll make I'll make it happen because he needs I, he's never seen an actual tournament table and he needs to. Yeah, no, I I would be honored. Okay, I would be honored. All right. Well, uh, safe travels, everybody. On the day that you're hearing this, you probably are getting on a plane at some point if you haven't done so already. So yeah, you might already be there. Maybe. Yep. Mm. All right, we are the Notorious Scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I am Mike. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>